Hello and welcome back to SciTi Tech. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this amazing desktop USB powered RGB LED magic potion bottle that uses real liquid. Let's get started. <laughs> These are all of the items that you will need to make this project. As you can see, it is separated in two categories. One is the electronics part, and two is the part to make the magic potion bottle. This part here is the electronics part, separated in two parts, where one part controls the RGB LEDs in the display part, and the other part will be the Arduino part that will drive the entire circuits. This part here is the Arduino part, and I have a schematic that is right here to show you how to make this entire project. If you want, you can pause this video and copy down the schematic to make this circuit yourself, or just watch the video and see how I do it step by step. Further detail of the electrical components that you will need. Four RGB LEDs. four auto-changing RGB LEDs, four 220-ohm resistors, an 18 mega 328 microcontroller and socket holder, two push-down buttons, two 22 picofarad ceramic capacitors, a 16 megahertz clock crystal, three pins to be able to reprogram your 18 mega 328 microcontroller, and these are the items that you will need to make the magic potion bottle. What I have right here is some burlap, and that's going to go wrapped around a bottle. I have this cardboard right here, which is going to go as the base for this to go underneath here of this ring that I cut out of a tube, and this part here will go on the bottom with the circuit inside and the bottle will set on top of it just like that and then of course you can remove the lid and use this cork to stick into the bottle and also with this bottle here how you can find this bottle is that this is actually a vinegar bottle, or olive oil, or white vinegar, or balsamic vinegar. In this case, it was a white balsamic vinegar. As you can see, you can find this at any grocery store. I found this, you can find this at any local grocery store, and you'll find this shape of bottle in the section where you have the olive oils and balsamic vinegars and other vinegars. And you just simply get this bottle for the prop. And what's inside here as you can see right here, this is laundry detergent. This here is laundry detergent. This laundry detergent, which is just basically uh, boric acid, will go inside of this bottle and mixed with water. And then that will make the water look murky and that will allow the LEDs that are inside underneath the bottle to shine to make it look like uh, the whole bottle to glow in the colors of the LEDs. And that's uh, what you need to be able to make it. You don't need much of this. In fact, this might be too much. I'm going to put very little in and then add it in as I go. You probably really only need like maybe one teaspoon or maybe exactly a soup spoon full. But you really don't need much. Now let's get started with the bottle. I'm going to first fill it up with water and stop right to that line. There we go, perfect. Now what I want to do is put some hot glue right there to start wrapping the string around it. But mind you, hot glue will harden quickly on glass, so you must work with this quickly. Wrap it around just like this, and add a little bit of extra hot glue to continue wrapping. And there you 
have it. Now it's done. Now let's go ahead and cut off the string. Now I'm going to take my funnel, put it in just like this, pour some of the laundry detergent inside. I'm going to shake up the bottle and allow it to dissolve into the bottle so it can look murky just like this. And with this, this will allow the LED light to diffuse evenly. I like from my previous project. Let's go ahead and test it out. Mm, it comes out perfectly. Nice. And there you have it. Now the bottle is done. Now let's go into the next step, and that is the electronics. And now let's get started on the electronics part. In a previous video, I have shown you how to make an Arduino on a perf board. I could have shown this in this video, but this video is already too long as it is. So what I have already done is I've already made the Arduino on a perf board. So if you want to see that video, click on the link in the description or click on the info card that's on the top of the screen. So now let's go ahead and get started with the LED parts. I'm going to go ahead and start with these resistors and solder them into this perf board. I'm going to place the resistors just like this so that way I can add resistance to all the anodes of the RGB LED, since this is a common cathode RGB LED. So I'm going to go ahead and solder the resistors in place. I'm going to use these color-coded wires to represent the colors of the LEDs. Place all the colored ones into the resistors. The yellow wire is actually goes to the auto-changing RGB LED, and the ground wire will go to ground for everything. There we go, soldered into place, and now I'm going to take my RGB LED, place it in just like that. Place all four of them in the same orientation. Solder them all into place, and of course cut off the leads. And it should look just like this. Now I'm going to go ahead and place the auto-changing RGB LEDs into specific orientation. Okay, so as you can see they're all placed in the perf board just like that. And I have all of the ground leads of those R auto changing RGB LEDs facing the ground of the RGB LEDs. Here are the leads that I have not discarded from the RGB LEDs. These can be reused again to bridge everything together. I'm going to go fold one end just like that. And I'm going to place it on the perf board just like that. Never discard leads because you can always use them to bridge everything together. As you can see, I am bridging those LEDs together, just like that. Bridging those wires together. Wires to the resistors. And now I've taken a marker, and I've marked for the auto-changing RGBs to connect all to ground. And I have more leads to connect to bridge. So now I'm going to bridge everything to ground. Now the auto-changing RGB LEDs are now attached to ground and ground to the RGB LEDs. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a long bridge and bridge everything to ground. And there you have it. Now all of the LEDs are now grounded. Now, as you can see, I'm going to now connect each of the anodes to each of the color-coded wires. And I'm going to use these wires to do so. These blue wires will connect to all of the blue LEDs. 
and further on I'm going to do the same thing with the other co color coded wires. Blue wire is now connected and now I'm going to go ahead and connect the blue wire to the blue connections of all the RGBs. Solder it into place and bridge it. And there you have it. All of the blue LEDs are now bridged together. Do the exact same thing for the green and red. And as you can see here, all of this yellow wire is connected to the auto changing RGB LED. And as you can see, I've removed the resistor. The resistor is not needed for these auto changing RGBs because when I connected the power, I noticed the auto changing RGBs were too dull. So no resistor is needed. Now, as you can see, both of the circuits are now complete. It is time to combine the two circuits together. I'm going to start with taking the negative wire that's from the LED circuit, and I'm going to connect that to the ground of the 18 mega circuit. Bridge it together. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take this 220 ohm resistor and connect and solder that into the VCC of the 18 mega circuit. Solder it into place and bridge it together. Now I'm going to take this red wire, which will represent positive, solder it to the resistor. And what I'm going to do with this positive wire from the resistor is I'm going to connect this positive wire to pin 5 of the 18 mega circuit. Solder it into place and bridge it together. Now the next thing I'm going to do is take another red wire, which will represent positive. Solder that wire to the pin 5. Just like this. Now I'm going to take a black wire, which will represent negative, and solder that to ground. Bridge it together. Now I'm going to go and take this push button switch and solder the positive and negative to the switch. This will be my push button switch to control the LEDs. Now it's time to connect this yellow wire, which is to the auto changing RGB LEDs. And I'm going to connect that to pin 12 of the AT Mega circuit. Bridge it together. And now I have the three watt remaining wires, which is the red, green, and blue, which will represent the red, green, blue LEDs. And we're going to connect those wires to pin 17, 16, and 15. Solder the wires in and bridge them together. There we go, now they're bridged together, and now the full circuit is now complete. Now it's time to plug in the AT Mega 328 microcontroller into its socket. Go to my lab bench power supply, go to 5 volts, and now let's power the circuit and test it out. LEDs are now red, green, blue, and now auto changing. The circuit is now a full success.
Okay, so now it's time to take the circuit and put it into its housing. Before I place the circuit into this housing, I want to make it look a little bit nicer by taking this burlap string and wrap it around this cardboard. First I want to go and take the string, glue it, and wrap it all the way around, just like this. There we go. Cut off the excess, and now it is complete. Glue that little bit in. And there, it is now complete. Looks much better than just cardboard. And that will be the bottom piece to enclose it. But to me, I think it looks a little too stringy, so I'm going to go and burn off the excess strings that are sticking out. So it looks a little bit cleaner looking. Rub all the burnt parts off, and there, that looks much nicer. A little bit more smooth too, if I may add. And now it's time to take the circuit, put a bunch of hot glue to insulate all the connections so they don't short anything. And as you can see, it doesn't really fit. That's okay, my solution is to cut off the edges. And there, now it fits. There, now the switch is connected, so I can toggle the modes. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this bottom bit, place it like this, and I want to put a bunch of hot glue around the edges, just like this, and enclose this housing. Perfect. The housing is now complete, plus circuit is now complete. All I need to do now is take this USB cable, cut off the end, and attach it to those two loose wires. Remove the green and white wire, because that's not needed. Just leave the red and black wire, which is positive and negative. Solder it together. Shrink tube it. And then shrink tube the outer side complete so it looks a little bit nicer. This magic potion bottle project is now complete. It is time to test it out. I'm going to shake the bottle first to make sure the laundry detergent is well mixed in solution, just so that way the LED light can disperse better inside the bottle. Take my USB cable and plug it into my computer. And there you have it. It works. Everything works perfectly by a single press of a button and you can toggle each different settings to change it to red, blue, green, or what I like to call party mode, which is the auto-changing RGB LEDs. So there you have it. Thank you for watching Sci-Tai Tech. I hope you learned something new, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and of course click on the bell icon to be notified for future Sci-Tai Tech videos. And have a happy Halloween.